Aurora All Seas Collectibles. Been in business for 30 years in Aurora, Colorado. Our address is 1250 South Abilene, 80012, Aurora, Colorado. We've been in business about 30 years, a little longer than that. We opened up in the end of 1987. My dad's been running this and still does to this day. We're family owned and operated. And uh, we appreciate you watching and taking the time to watch our show, The Collector's Corner. Looking for cash? All Seas Collectibles pays cash for old collectibles. We are always looking for cards, coins, comics, and more. Mark May, how are you doing, my friend? Dude, I'm doing good, man. How you been doing, James? Awesome, bro. Nice to see awesome. you. It's good to see you, too, man. What you got? I got the first appearance of Silver Surfer style by Stanley. Awesome. 3.0, great. Message. The coming of Galactus exactly. as well. Galactus. Jack Kirby, classic, classic piece. All the all-time greatest. Absolutely. King Kirby. You got a signature series CGC book here, so that means they witnessed Stanley autograph this. I actually got it in person, Denver Comic Con, a couple years ago. Awesome, we were the all there. the first time we ever met, yeah. yeah. I give him a little picture, he said, why don't you draw me a little bit more like Brad Pitt? <laughs> that sounds like Stanley, yeah, my friend. Yeah, yeah. So tell me a little about yourself, Mark. Oh, awesome. uh, you, you know, I'm uh, Mark May, Silent Mayhem Productions, comic artist. like to draw stuff, almost anything, anything you can think of. Right, right. Um, Silent Mayhem Productions, that kind of. MarkMayArt.com. And you got a commission piece. You actually did a commission artwork. Uh, I did. I uh, I do have a 11 by 17 bronze medal that's framed. That's Stanley signed of the original. Awesome. Sweet. That's really cool. All right. So enough, of Mark May. Let's talk about this comic book. <laughs> Mark is an amazing artist. Check out his stuff. Silent Mayhem Production. He's on Facebook all the time. Takes commissions. I have several of his pieces hanging in my home. They're nice. Now, this is FF48, pivotal, pivotal book in Marvel. This is kind of the cornerstone of everything we see galactic in the universe of Marvel. Um, Jack Kirby is the founder of all these ideas and thoughts with the stories of Stan Lee. That's why it's awesome Stan Lee wrote this and signed the book itself. You really don't find too many Stan Lee books that he signed. Right, and that he actually he wrote actually the story. Wrote, like, what's done? Yeah, I see people get Stan Lee autographs on I don't, New Mutants 98. Or other books that he had no part of. This is cool because he actually did write this story and he was pivotal in the making of this comic. Something like this, you know, uns autographed in a 3.0, you know, in this market it's probably worth about 800 to 900 bucks. Now that we have a certified witness and CGC graded with the Stanley autograph, retail is probably going to be closer to 1800 on eBay market value. So we are going to pay you somewhere around half of that, of course, because I have to make money and pay eBay fees. Absolutely. I'm not even going to negotiate with you because I think your price is so great. Thank you, brother. And I try to be more than anybody. 900 bucks cash. We pay you for this. Deal done. Thank you, Mark May. <laughs> Hello, folks, and welcome to this, the very first episode of the new season of All Seas Collector's Corner. You might recognize me from the sign that you see overhead every time you walk in to see our wonderful collectible menagerie. Anyways, allow me to introduce myself. I am Hecklaw, and I am the official spokes jester for All Seas Collectibles. Also available for weddings, public speaking engagements, and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> We've got a great episode ahead of us, just chock full of showcases of bright and shiny collectibles. But before we move on, I thought I'd try to add to the spectacle a bit. And what do you think I could do to enhance the collectible browsing experience? Well, what if I were to tell you we're going to do the rest of the show in 3D? Everyone take out the lenticular blue and red glasses that have been painstakingly mailed to every citizen in the greater Colorado area and get ready to put them on by the time I count to three. Ready? One? Two? Wait, nothing's happening. Uh, did something go wrong? Oh, wait, I've just been informed that we actually didn't set the rest of the show up for 3D. And we didn't mail anything to anyone either. My bad. <laughs> well, even though that was a must, be sure to enjoy the rest of All Seas Collectibles Corner. And see you all in the funny papers. <laughs> 
What you bring me, bro? Uh, just a little bit of a mix of like some Silver Age in there. Nice. A bunch of uh, Joker covers. That's the first Gwen Stacy cover. Kind of cool. It's just a little bit Amazing of a... Spider-Man 61. Very cool. A little bit of a mix of some stuff. Yeah. Cool World Fighters cover. Nice. Destruction too. Neil Adams. Raza Ghoul cover. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Nice, dude. Neil That's Adams. Cool. Neil Adams, love that guy. Mm -hmm. Seen him chew out people at Comic Con several times. <laughs> Danny's a local guy, finds me a lot of stuff. He's also on Mile High Sports Radio. What's the call letters? Uh, 1340 AM, uh, Altitude Radio to uh, 92.5 FM. But yeah. It's pretty awesome. I've known Danny for a long time from the store. I mean, I've seen his career grow here. It's kind of awesome. He still is a picker, he knows what to find. Steranko, Neil Adams, or uh, Nick Fury. James and all C's crew always take care of me. They always got cool stuff in the store to come look at. Yeah, that's a nice box. Probably gave you like 500 bucks for it, bro. Pretty, pretty fair. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Thank you, do brother. It. Sure. Of course, buddy. No problem. just got a bunch of Pokemon cards in and these are exactly what we're looking for. These are some of the original Pokemon cards. We've got our 1995-96 cards here. Now these couple cards I'm laying out right here are really nice. These are our Shadowless cards. These are both Shadowless and First Edition cards. Each one of these is going for between 5 and 30 bucks, even in the common ones. If you have some of the rare ones like Shadowless First Edition Charizard, that's where you've hit big money on your Pokemon cards. Now that wasn't the end of the collection though. We've got a whole bunch of First Edition cards here that we haven't seen come in for a long time. First edition Fossil, first edition Team Rocket, first edition Jungle, first edition Neo Genesis. These are the gems that you're looking for when you are looking to sell your Pokemon cards. It's always good to have stuff from the old collections, but that first edition stamp just makes it that much better every time. So like right here, we've got ourselves a Dark Hypno that's a first edition. We've got Dark Blastoise first edition. We've even got an original Gengar first edition. All of these recently came through here at All Seas Collectibles. It was an awesome buy. If you guys have stuff like this laying around at home, some old first edition Pokemon cards, bring them by. If you have the Shadowless first edition, that's where it's missing that shadowed edge. Those are even more valuable. Bring them by, we'll see what we can do. See if we can't come to a good deal with you all and see what we got. We buy all sorts of Pokemon cards up here. We love the old stuff, the 96, 97 stuff but we buy all sorts of Pokemon these days. Thank you very much. So what did you bring me today here? Oh, well, um, I've got a whole collection of uh, Nintendo and Super Nintendo games is that I've been collecting for many years, uh, probably one or two years before most people had just begun. As that you remember, back when Blockbuster and Hollywood Video were closing down. Yeah. They had a whole bunch of these games that uh, um, just uh, hanging on their shelves and they would sell them for maybe about five to ten bucks a piece. Okay. And so that made up a bunch of my original Super Nintendo collection. I mean, games here like uh, Donkey Kong Country. Yeah. Um, they are um, in the collector's market are probably only worth ten or fifteen bucks because everybody had a copy of these. Yeah. When they get so put back onto the market, you know, um, they are not nearly as rare. But then there are other games here like. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. Absolutely. That um, they cost maybe about uh, between uh, 40 to 60 bucks because of their current rarity. Another good one there is Yoshi's Island right here. You know, and then Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island is a very popular game. Um, uh, at this point, uh, many people are uh, claiming that you know this is starting to become scarce, so it's starting to go up in value. Um, for the most part, you still might be able to find a copy of it for maybe about 25 bucks. Similar here, we got a Super Mario All-Stars. Mm -hmm. Super Mario All-Stars is becoming more and more popular every day there. Um, the Lost Levels are in there. It's one of the only English versions. It's been going up. It's 20 25 bucks at the moment as well. Uh, I see a couple anime games here. Want to tell me about them? Oh, well, you know, this is my personal favorite part of the collection, is that e each of these games are probably only about between 8 and 10. Okay. So, but um, they're... Important to me because when I was young, I was only just getting into anime. And there was kind of an anime cover-up going on. This was before Toonami and Stan, things like that. Yes. So you'd have things like this Ranma One Half that has an Americanized box art cover. And so, you know, that will still usually retail for um, about 10 bucks. Okay. Um, 
Dragon Power, the game that is secretly the first American released Dragon Ball game based on the original Dragon Ball. And also the top secret episode of Go Go 13, uh, which was uh, released here in the United States by a company called Vic Tokai. Oh, very cool. And what about these Tengen cartridges? You got a handful of these ones here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, Tengen was a company that um, was attempting to compete with Nintendo. Eventually, they released a whole bunch of unlicensed cartridges. And most of their games were originally arcade games that Nintendo didn't have a license for. Like Vindicators, which was originally an arcade game from Midway. Um, same with uh, the original Gauntlet. And also Roadrunner, which is a lesser known original arcade game from Atari. Very nice. And then I see an Earthbound cartridge here. Tell me a little bit about that one. Well, you know, Earthbound uh, uh, is considered to be a rare game. It usually mints for between $50 and $70, especially if you were to find it in its original box with its uh, strategy guide sized instruction manual. Yeah. But I do wanted to put this in because buyer beware. This is what you call a reproduction cartridge. You can see that the uh, screws here are not real. They're just molded into yep. the cartridge slot. If you go on eBay, you'll be able to find a lot of these, uh, but um, they're not the actual rare cartridges. They're probably just worth the plastic that they're printed on. All righty. Well, what all would you say this whole collection's worth? I'm seeing about $300 worth of games here, I'd say, maybe a little more. So we like buying at about 50% here. If we can move it right away, it means I could give you about 150 a day for everything. Mm -hmm. That's pretty fair. Sounds good. Right. Mike, thanks for coming on in today. All right, today we are going to talk about some Dungeons and Dragons. Now, there are all sorts of old Dungeons and Dragons. Today we are going to be talking a little bit about the D&D Dungeons Master's Guide, as well as we've got the Player's Handbook here, some old D&D books that we bring in. If you guys have old D&D books at your house, you guys can bring them by. We can take a look. The older, the better with D&D books. We're always looking for AD&D, original D&D, chain mail. Those kind of books are always great finds. You can bring them in. We can see how much cash we can give you for them today. Before the D-Day invasion. Oh, was it really? Nice. Before D-Day? Yeah. That is weird. It's the same boats and everything. Yeah. All right, Brother Blaine, what you bring me, bro? Uh, today I brought a bunch of Golden Age stuff. Uh, awesome. And some silver. I got a lot of LB Cole, Alex Schomburg, Timelies. Great. A lot of bondage covers. Awesome stuff we don't see very often. Very is much. Airboy. That's an awesome book right there. Super hard to find. Bondage cover. Hardest in the title. Very clean, too. Got a nice spine on it. Good color. Purple book. Beautiful. Thank you. Got Zoot. Sweet. Super another, rare bondage. Another bondage cover. Fox Syndication. These are huge in the collectible market because they don't make books like this, and especially after the comic codes in the 50s. Absolutely. You wouldn't get away with that anymore. The good girl art's really come a long way. It's gotten very desirable in the next, in the past few years. Right. So my favorites are the uh, L.B. Cole horror. This is the genre that's gone up tremendously in the last five years. Golden Age horror, VG or better. And these are definitely in that genre. L.B. Cole's. He's a madman of horror covers. It's awesome. A lot of demons, a lot of Satan Satanistic covers. Of course, the Grail. The LB Cole Grail are one of them. That is amazing. Spider cover. Super rare. Very desirable. Beautiful, beautiful comic. Manhunt 14. This one's so rare. It's not even in the Gerber photo journal. No picture, no. No file copy, no. Nothing. Not in the Edgar Church from the Mount High collection, because uh, he didn't do a lot of horror books either. Mm -hmm. No file copy, no. It's tough, too, especially on Golden Age and Silver Age books. The Gerber collection would tell you that, too. I'm going to get them to Timelies, which are some of my personal favorites. Yeah. So, Mariner, Namor. This is the golden age when they were a big push to fight in World War II against the Japanese and the Germans. Yeah. Some more of my favorite, personally, in Marvel Mystery Comics. It's awesome. Another Gold bondage. Timely. Another bondage cover. A little rough on the condition, but like I say, uh, 
Low grade is better than no grade. Right. Yeah. And I'd still say VG and better or good. I mean, it's got a little little dog ear, but who cares? I don't see especially Marvel Mystery Comics at all. As long as the art is generally preserved, that's what pretty much people want. Another one of the later issues. Yeah, after the uh, World War II ended, they start doing uh, the more uh, com- less combat covers and more uh, bank robberies and stuff like that. Right. Not nearly as interesting, but no, still <laughs> awesome. Still awesome. Another run, of, getting toward the end of the run there. These are great books. Super high grade, blonde fan, number sixteen. It's a beautiful book, beautiful color. Look at that spine. Any Golden Age book with a spine like that is going to be impossible. Yeah, it's. I was shocked when I found it. Yeah, that's a strong staple, too. That's a pretty book. Yeah, everything's tight. Tight cover, tight centerfold. Color breaks. Yeah, let's just go from timely to timely. Another USA comics featuring Captain America and Robin Tiffany's. Awesome. Again, after, uh, after wartime combat covers, so these get a little less interesting, but... Still worth a look. The true crime, crime fighting began. This kicked off Marvel, you know. Became Captain America, who he truly is, too. That's right. We'll go again with another Golden Age Captain America. A little more interesting where he's actually wow. fighting Japanese. There's a World War II cover, obviously. Fighting Japanese. Evil Buddha on the cover. That's sick. That's an awesome, awesome book. Two fives a good grade on this book. Affordable grade. Affordable grade. You're not going to find anything much better than that either. You know, I bet the census was the highest grade on this book. Probably not. Could be close. There's not. There's just not a lot of them out there. Yeah, they're, they're not showing a lot. And everybody wants them, so. The D-Day Invasion, Omaha Beach. This uh, is very interesting because this particular cover was drawn at least 13 months before the D-Day Invasion. Which is so. crazy. You can see they're using the same boats, the PT boats or whatever, that are coming up there to bring in the troops. Looks exactly like the scene from D-Day. So this is why I think Alex Schomburg was a bit of a prophet. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that right? This is awesome. Great, great cover. And this also, so this has a purple label book. It means it's restored. But this book's been professionally restored. You can tell that the restorer did a great job on it. Great color. 20 years ago, it was a big, big movement in comic books to get a professional res- restoration done on books. That's what this has. We just keep moving along. They just get better. World War II, Nazi, cult cover. Great color on this. Original, non-restored, 4.0 blue label. Super, super rare book. Uh, only one of these comes up for sale like every couple of years. And well, you got the Nazi KKK cover on the front there. To obviously, we all know what that means. Oh yeah. So, a bang up, combat cover. I like that one because of the uh, wintertime scene. There's not a lot of those. Right, absolutely. Love all the war covers, obviously. Superheroes had a big, huge part in this from Superman, Batman, saw Mariner Namor, they all fought the Germans. Another one of my favorites is uh, 15 swastikas on that cover. (laughs) And one is a brandy. Iron. And one is a branding iron. <laughs> Poor Taro is going to get it right in the back there. That's awesome. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that actually happened too, but it, that's not the same name as the dam the Allies blew up. Blew, blew up. Another awesome war cover. So they're showing you history in comic books. What actually happened in the war was being portrayed in comic books at the time. And somewhat motivating propaganda for allied True. troops and uh, supporters. <laughs> Absolutely. War bonds. This is what is known as the last Japanese war cover. Second, second last. Another book with great cover. The strong reds on these are awesome. And the greens really make it pop. Yeah, absolutely. One nice thing about Colorado, too, is we have a great com- climate for comics. If these were originally from Colorado, we don't know, but... I don't know if they could. I don't think they could have originally been from Colorado because they didn't start selling Marvel here until 1960. Yeah, yeah, right, true. So if they were well, here, they were brought here. And they're brought here. However, um, I'm not sure how far west they did start selling these and when. I don't know. That's a good question. 
Yeah. Just another some more of my favorites. This is the coolest book I think we have here. Joker's my all-time favorite. Early, early Joker appearance. Detective 102. Hold title. 3.0. Blaine, you got amazing stuff, brother. Oh, thank you. It's one of the best Golden Age collections we see walking through. Like I said, Colorado is not known for having a lot of this stuff. We're a younger city. So to see books like this is a kind of very extremely rare. Or Bondage, GGA, good girl art. Fiction House Comics along with Planet, F Fight Comics, Wings, who uh, were some of the uh, leading publishers in what we call good girl art, or GGA, 1940s. LB. Super rare horror cover. Early 50s. LB Cole's one of the classic horror artists I grew to talk about earlier. Doesn't have her a Hitler stamp on the back, too. <laughs> right, it does. <laughs> Takes you back. Takes you back. Different day and era. We don't see stuff like this anymore. It's awesome. Not sure who did that one. What's another Ajax Feral publication? Kind of hard to find those. Got a sci-fi robot cover on it. Super. Beautiful. So, yeah. Just thought I'd bring a few things by for you guys to check out today. Hey, it's an amazing collection, Blaine. Thank you Appreciate very much, Appreciate you, James. brother, very much, man. Absolutely. Cool. Anytime. Stop by Old Seas Gaming Arena to play your favorite card games, board games, and video games today. At LC's Collectibles, we buy all kinds of different collectibles. Cards, coins, comics, gold, silver, toys, gaming, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon. Anything you think you might want have, and at the house, kicking around the place, in the attic, your grandma's house maybe, or relatives, old coins, you don't know about them, bring them in, we'll check them out for you, tell you if anything you have there worth anything, and if we're interested in buying them. Now this process takes a few different aspects. We have different references we price at, what the market value is, what people are looking for, obviously the demand of the item and the rarity. So if you have anything you think you might have at the house that's good, please don't hesitate to bring it on in and we'll check it out for you. Here we got a comic book recently back from CBCS. I had graded, purchased this book in the store raw, then I sent it in and got it graded from CBCS. Giant Size Chillers, Dracula appearance. It's also the first appearance of Lilith, his daughter. This is a big binding book. That's part of the reason I sent it in and got it graded. They're tough. They have a thick binding on these giant sizes. This came back in 8.5. White pages, which is awesome. I actually think this book is a little nicer than an 8.5. But that's what they graded it. Here we have Tales of Terror, pre-code horror book from EC Comics. This is pivotal in our comic book history and comic books in general. This book and this series... Uh, made us come up with a comic code through time. They thought these books were too violent for kids and youth of America to read. As you can see, this cover is a bondage cover with a branding iron on it. You got demons and the witches there killing this guy on the front cover. Didn't think that was appropriate for children. This book is CGC graded 5.0. Cream to off-white pages. Al Feldstein cover. Al Feldstein's a famous artist of EC horror books. Beautiful, beautiful comic, super rare. There's only three EC annuals, and this is one of them. All-American Comics is one of the major books for Green Lantern, Golden Age. Alan Scott started this book for a long period of time. Here we have another EC Golden Age horror book, pre-code. This is an awesome book here. Alligator Pit reference on the front with a zombie coming out of it. These books are known for murder, scandal, a lot of human beings treating each other poorly. They're great, great horror books. Truly scary. Spawn, the obviously everybody knows Tales from the Crypt TV show in the 80s on HBO. Extremely popular. Extremely rare to find. Come by, check it out. Well, that's all show. We've seen a lot of mind-expanding things today. But if these shadows have offended, remember these wise words from my former mentor in comedy. Somebody get me a doctor. I'm not quite ready to go yet. 
I'm not giving you kind words of advice. I want you to save my life, you idiot. <laughs> oh, that always takes me back. Anyway, see you next time. <laughs>